There was a time when Australians didn't have much choice when it came to beer. So, what have you got? We got VB on tap, VB in a can, and special edition VB in a cask. <laughs> what am I, the Queen? But now, thanks to the rise of craft beer, our choices seem endless. And this is Algernon Hopsworth IPA, stirred with the rib of the last Tasmanian tiger. Too mainstream. Overall, beer consumption is falling, but craft beer sales are growing rapidly. So, everyone's getting in on it. But just because your beer looks like an independent operation with an authentic history, doesn't mean it is. Like Steamrail Pale Ale, sold with the slogan, There's a story behind every great beer, and ours is that we're created by Coles in 2013. There's Jim and Joe's Lorry Boys with its logo of a vintage truck. Hello, governor. And the vintage of that brand goes all the way back to... Uh, 2015, when we were also created by Coles. In 2014, the ACCC fined Carlton United for giving the impression that... Byron Bay Lager is brewed in Byron Bay. When it was actually made at the Warnervale Brewery, 630 kilometres away. Well, uh, I'm off to hang a 10. Water colleagues. For all the boutique branding, the Aussie beer market is still dominated by two international conglomerates. AB InBev from Belgium, which owns Carlton United, and Japanese company Kirin, who owns the Lion Group. They control over 80% of beer sales in Australia. This includes lots of the big names and internationals, and also heaps of craft brands they've bought out or created over the years. Companies like Asahi and Coca-Cola are in on the craft beer craze too, which doesn't leave a lot of room for independent Australian-owned brewers. So why should I care? Well, many smaller brewers say that the major players use their market power to control what beers are available at your pub. So most of what you see here are really just brands from one of the two big companies. Still don't care. They use tab contracts, which offer incentives like free fridges, promotions and discounts, if the pubs reserve most taps for their beers. You'd better hit your sales targets, or I think you'll find I'm not as relaxed as I look. In America... These type of incentives are illegal because they result in unfair market advantages and millions of dollars in fines have been handed out by regulators like the ABC. The ABC regulates alcohol in America? I'm here with the beer tasting division. Okay, so what do these tap contracts say in Australia? Well, ours says that our supplier must be the exclusive supplier of all light beer, low carbohydrate beer, domestic premium and sub-premium beer, imported draft beer, specialty and craft beer, and all draft spirits and ciders. But anyone can provide our water. Cool. Now, not all tap contracts are this exclusive, but they do often cover the majority of taps and fridge space. But big brewers say the idea that tap contracts reduce competition is a furphy. They're not hop hogs out to Roger independent brewers. And pub owners think that tap contracts are the bee's knees because they get their beer cheaper and they only have to deal with one supplier. Now, independent brewers say that these are white lies. They say they'd love to tap more pubs, but the modus operandi of the big brewers is keeping them out of pubs and costing them heaps in sales. So to settle that argument, enter the constable. What? The ACCC. The ACCC investigated more than 140 contracts across 36 pubs over three years. It was basically the world's most boring pub crawl. They concluded that while tap contracts were widespread, the pubs... ...did not feel constrained from making taps available to smaller brewers and therefore the contracts are unlikely to substantially lessen competition. Which sounds like the big brewers are off the hook. But they did say... ...will continue to closely monitor the market. Sounds like a pretty good excuse to go to the pub. I'd like to uh, monitor four schooners, please. Now, many drinkers just like their one beer. They don't care who owns it or where it's brewed. And we get that. One Queensland shandy. Ah, 4X with a dash of 4X. But if you do care who owns your beer, the ACCC has told big brewers they have to put it somewhere on the label. And they have. In tiny writing that no one's ever going to read. 
speak for yourself. Finding out where your beer is brewed can also be difficult. Many overseas brands like Carlsberg, Peroni or the Dutch Heineken may look imported and carry a premium price tag, but somewhere on the label a little bit of text will say brewed in Australia. Mate, I'm as Dutch as a bloody windmill. If you do want independent Australian beer, the Independent Brewers Association is working on a new logo to put on their members' products. They've rejected my suggestion, but it should be on bottles and taps later in 2018. That way, people who do care about who owns their beer can support independent brewers and do the noble work of encouraging pubs to stock a wider range. And that means more boutique, wanker beers for everybody. Mate, I'm so thirsty I can lick the sweat off a dog's balls. Perfect.